Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is wind load transfer from Rwind 2 to RFM 6. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the company Dubai Software. For instance, the content of the website, the German and English webinars, customer projects, newsletters, and so on. I will be the moderator today and I will answer your questions. My colleague Andreas Niemeyer will be the presenter today. He's the head of product engineering in our company. Yeah, that means he's the main responsible person for the development of the programs and add ons. Okay, some words how you can ask questions. Before I do that, I switch off my camera that you can see the full screen. You can click on that question mark above. Then you need to enter your question in that field, press send, and then I will receive your question and I will answer you. Okay, that should be all from my side. Uh, I hand over to Andreas Niemeyer. Andreas, it's your turn. Thank you. Then I take over with the topic wind load transfer from Rwind 2 to Rfm 6 Today I prepared an interesting program for you. I, I want to show you how you can move models from Rfm to Rwind, of course. And for this I selected some special models and prepared some interesting stuff that you know how to control all this properties and settings for such an analysis. To, to have a clear program, I divided my presentation into five main points. The first is about modeling in RFM. So here we talk about how or which type of elements you have, what you can transfer, which properties you have, which discretization options you have, how you can control mesh and so on. In the second point, we transfer the model to our wind. So for me, point one and two is always connected, but I show you how you can control all this stuff. In the third point, we perform finally from our model a CFD analysis to see which results the our wind program with its core outputs and how we can use it later. In the fourth point, we use finally the results from the CFD analysis in our wind. Let's say we move it back to our firm for a further static analysis, for example. And finally, I want to sum up everything and give you an outlook about our current development in this field. As you see in these pictures here on the right side, this is a little bit maybe a, a sequence of how we go through the program today. At first we talk about the elements, how you can move it to a wind, which type, about meshing options, so this should represent um, this first part and the second part represents how you or which results you get in our wind and how you can use it in RFM. And this brings me now directly to the point where we jump to the program. So we do it in a live demo. You see how it works. And I jump now into RFM. I prepared here already a state that the program asks me about the model name. Yeah, so that gives this child a name, for example, TT100. Now, of course, this is a typical RFM model and RFM models always lives that you define in begin what you want to do. And this you have to do in this tab add-ons. You see, you can select concrete design, steel design, non-linear material behavior, whatever, many stuff. But we select today for today's program only wind simulation. This means we connect the program RFM to the our wind program digitally and uh, how it works I show you later but we open these options with this check here. Further I want to do this presentation without connection to any standard so I 
deactivate the classification of load cases and additionally I deactivate the load wizard what connects the definition of wind diagrams according any standard so we do it really rough really mechanical this means I have in the following tops no option to define if all boxes are great no standard have to define the box remains empty here on this side so let's jump into the program and you receive a typical RFM environment with the table on the bottom, with the navigator on the left side, with the toolbars on the top, and with the graphic desktop in the middle. And now we directly can start. Um, but before I pick my first nodes and elements, I, I want to, to highlight now the mightiness, what you get with this option. Yeah. Um, in RFM, as you know, you have uh, member elements, you have uh, surface elements, you have solid elements, yeah, solids. And all these elements are, could be connected with properties, only tension, only with yielding, whatever. So you, you can prescribe these elements for her statical uh, resistance. And now our team made it happen that you can use all these static elements or let's say structural elements in a wind tunnel. So we, 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 we got a chance to, to use this structure. Maybe a member is for us as engineers only a line or a surface is only a surface without thickness because the thickness we describe by parameter. But this interface to the wind tunnel sees this element not as line, for example, a member, then with this outer hull, so we see uh, cross section rendering and move the hull into the wind tunnel, uh, do calculation and give the results back on the line. And this is a really a mighty, a mighty or powerful function. And I want to show you today all this function on all type of elements. And I want to start now with the member type first. So let's define a member in the graphics. Um, I pick the member function. Of course, it should be a beam element. Um, here I define a cross section. So make a new section. Let's start with a not the complex section like we just see with an IP. Then let's use a, a, a rectangular section. So you see here is our library on the left part. These blue, uh, blue items are thin wall cross sections like I sections, C sections, C sections, whatever. And on the right side, these gray items are massive cross sections made for timber and concrete. I use now here this squared cross section. Uh, give here a size, for example, uh, 300 millimeters and assign a material. So for me, steel is, fits not with these 300 millimeters. So I assign a concrete um, and you see you get uh, the expected gray color and we confirm this setting and uh, pick here the member into the space. Now we get the typical member structure for us, as I mentioned in background, it's only a, a line. Um, yeah, here you can imagine the cross section around the line. Of course, we can uh, support it um, for structure calculation. And if I run, maybe only to give you an imagination what this element means in RFM, I run a load case self weight. And um, here you see the program is doing something, let's say calculating, and now we get the result. Of course, uh, maybe I sh I show you only this uh, wireframe model. You see deflection is really minor because self-weight forces really massive section have no effect. But what we really can see better is, for example, the normal axis force diagram, and you see the normal axis force diagram is increasing to the bottom according its self weight. And finally, this means also a support force on the bottom according to this self weight with the same size but in the vice versa direction. 
So statical analysis is more or less working really easy in this structure. You pick uh, the elements, you define boundary conditions and start calculation, you receive results. But this is not the only work what uh, civil engineers have do or also regular engineers have to do in such a program. You also suffered with some uh, topics that you have to consider climatic loads on your structure. And here of course we know snow but also wind and today is uh, wind the focus. So uh, I want to show you how you can define wind loads on such a structure. Of course, we have standards and rules and articles which gives us schemes for for uh, describing wind loads via element loads, maybe about a, a line load on the structure. But these schemes always related to a specific shape. And um, because we realized from our users that the shapes always changing or going more organic or curved, whatever. So you have not always these nice shoebox shapes. Um, therefore, we, we started the development of a, a digital wind tunnel program with our wind and we connected our structure calculation of a business wind tunnel program. And um, here, this allows you to consider all shapes in the wind tunnel and your entry to this is a load case. So I jump now to the load cases. Um, I open this table row in a dialog by double clicking on the left uh, gray bar. You see load case two is already opened. We can give a name, maybe CFD wind. Yeah? And now we have to learn the program what to do. No, we don't want to do a static analysis and we want to do a wind simulation. This means, this means now, and you get a hint directly because below still the static analysis setting are active. Yeah, because a wind analysis means program is taking the structure, the hull of the structural model into wind handle, do CFD analysis, detect forces on the structure model gives these forces back to RFM for further static analysis setting, calculates normal axis uh, force diagrams, bending moment diagrams, calculate deflections and uh, have so far a two-way calculation, so CFD plus static, so therefore you have to define both here. But we came to this later. Now, what is important for me, you see, if you change to wind simulation, you have here two new tops. The first is, let's say, the standard description, what should be done behind wind simulation. Here, in the first top, you have, let's say, I call it simply calculation parameters. If you take a look into, you see, okay, what is... Uh, uh, Behind, you can see, uh, you can check here which simulation type is done, steady flow analysis, so the average time analysis, you get uh, average over the full time segment, um, you get here a transient flow analysis, um, where you can calculate over time, where you get for every time step a result, so of course the second option eats more time, but gives you a higher quality of result. You can describe the medium what is flowing around the structure. You can define which solver meshing. You can define uh, options like if if turbulence uh, should be considered or not, upon the conditions of uh, the wind tunnel. Generally, the wind tunnel is defined that the bottom is is a terra surface, that the speed is going to zero and right, right left and top is a slip boundary that the wind can slip through. Um, you can define uh, if your elements, if the hull surface, what you send into the wind tunnel is rough or not. You can define user-defined wind tunnel settings and so on. 
Further to every setting, maybe to steady flow, you have here your calculation uh, parameters, how many iterations, which turbulence model should be used, which iteration value you monitor during calculation, pressure differences or drag force differences, and advanced calculation parameters. Further, so this is the way how it should be done. Now, what should be done? Because we have a wind tunnel, the question is, what are the loads? So in st structure model, it's the forces. Here we need a wind speed, what we send in. So um, you can define here a wind speed diagram over high. Yeah. So you see, for ex it's a typical table. You can describe here, for example, at zero we have 10 meter per second. At one uh, one meter we have, uh, for example, also 10 meter per second, and we receive a constant diagram over high. If we want to, let's say, uh, make a Another diagram, it's also easy, for example, you write here 0 0.5, uh, here 1, here 10, and you describe here any value. So this table input just allows you to, to define any wind what you want, maybe a, a slow wind, a strong wind, a storm. So you, the list could be extended. So it's in your hands which wind you send in and which results you receive. In my case, I made it easy, so I, I make only a constant diagram over high with 10 meter per second. And assign it to this load case. In the next, we know now how, we know now what and in which direction. So if we define here zero degrees, it means the wind is blowing into x direction and if you define here any angle, it will be rotated around global C. Yeah. Further, now the description in which region, so we call it wind tunnel, it's a box around structure. Here the beam, what we describe in the graphics, represents the house, represents the beam in the graphics. You see the wind tunnel is always described according to the maximum sizes or let's say uh, hull sizes of the model what you place in the wind tunnel multiplicated that you get also for example for high we know our member is one meter long and here you see the, the final high is a, is a, a fracture uh, of this size. No? But all values are great. Yeah? You can't pick it. It's a standard setting that the program automatically detects the size of the wind tunnel around the structure. If I confirm this, you see what happens. Um, according to this one meter high beam, the program describes here this wind tunnel box with these dashed lines with the input wind speed, wind speed in, in, in our RFM. So far, so good. If you want to change this wind tunnel, so no problem, you can do it. You get the mighty to, get to do this. You only have to open the calculation parameters um, and say, I want to have user defined wind tunnel options. And now you can describe the values, these fractures roundabout with, with a factor or with the size. No? In my case now, because I want to explain you how the our wind interprets the structure model. I make now a really small wind tunnel, not to, to speak about quality of results and more to speak about discretization. So this has nothing to do with the wind results and more about how the mesh is done. So please see it in this eyes. So therefore I define here round about half a meter. And to, to make more or less a 2D problem of it, I describe now no high over uh, above the model. And if I check this, you see our box is really small now. And to, to see the connection to the structure, if I change this to maybe zero to 10 centimeters, you see the wind tunnel is going more smaller. So uh, you, you have the control. You can change it if you want. We have automatism to to define a general size according any rule. If you want to change it smaller or bigger, you can do it also. But now um, I make it really small to show you that you can do it. And 
to to go to check meshes and not to wait so long no? because if we mesh it we always have to wait a few seconds so as small as this domain is as 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 quick it, it's it's going and <coughs> now um the next point what I want to mention is this is now our structure model a small member in uh, RFM but how the wind tunnel sees this model let's take a look um, of course you can press calculate and the pro you see a progress bar and finally you get the result but when we want to see behind the engine you can do following you can double click here load case going to wind simulation you have here button to open the wind tunnel program in between or you have here below results uh, calculate sorry um, also an option to open the wind tunnel behind now yeah? and if you do this the program is sending the structure model into the wind tunnel program. Now we are in our wind and you see, of course, the program have some control mechanism. If we want to turn off simplified model at first, no, I don't want to do this. Later we talk about, so no, and you get, let's say, more or less a similar drawing like in our fam. Yeah, wind tunnel around this beam segment, input wind speed, navigate uh, and so on. But um, we can talk about uh, in the next steps about these options. Um, this is for you now, of course in a different style, but because it's another program. But let's see how the program interprets this graphic, so this blue box in meshes, how it will really will discretized and for this we go to simulation and say no not start because this small wind tunnel makes no sense but we only generate mesh to see um, yes wind tunnel is too small but but we accept this now and you see program is changing in a mechanism where it shows me what what is done so you have here such a information window that you do block mesh that you decompose that you do a snappy hex mesh process how much elements you already did so it's more or less informative and you get the sign when it's ready for your information what he's doing so generally he moves this rendering uh, uh, graphics from our fam into this wind tunnel. Here he defines or he have a really a rough mesh so he describes his blue surfaces by really big triangle surfaces. Then he mesh these triangle surfaces with a let's say a, a, a finer mesh to, to discretize uh, the sizes of of how fine the mesh is so he lies a mesh on it it binds a uh yeah how to say um a finer mesh on these surfaces later he simplifies it to make it windproof and between this simplified mesh and the uh wind tunnel sides the program creates a solid mesh um, where it do the flow cal calculation where it detects the pressures wind velocities and so on now he's ready and we get the first view on it. Of course he don't uh, visualize this mesh like a solid because then we don't see something so he have always his sli slices. In our case because we created it like a 2D problem we want to take a look at uh, top view and here for me now is important that you see the program knows that he should be mesh fine near the object so he creates a really a fine mesh near the object and to 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 save calculation time he increases the size from the object to the wind tunnel side so here the elements are going bigger yeah so this is the general behavior the program always wants to mesh near the object fine but at the moment nobody said something about how big and how small the elements are that this is done always relative to the model size here it's important to you that you know 
the program knows generally here mesh density and this mesh density factor is deciding how much elements are globally used and always with this gradient from small to big and in this case we have now let's say more or less about 350,000 elements with the standard setting I would say this is connected to a calculation time of 5 to 10 minutes if you want to change it of course the calculation time is increased or decreased but let's change this mesh density to 10 percent that you see the change yeah? we don't change it here because then we only change it locally and the rfm don't know it so every setting we change in rfm so i close this program now don't store and we say in the calculation parameters, of course, uh, we go into the how it should be analyzed and change here from 20 to 10. Yeah. And, um, yeah, let's check it and uh, jump into the wind tunnel. And you see the same question. No, simplification is okay. Um, no. And if we mesh it again, generate mesh then I expect that the process is much quicker than before mm, you see now mm, the, the global amount is much smaller than before not about 350,000 then really only a fracture of it and if we see the splice we already smell what happened so um, let's take a top view um, you see, of course, it's fine near object, but, but the global amount of mesh cells is less. Yeah. So with this mesh density, you change uh, the global amount of elements what are used, but still the gradient from model to outer sides is, is, is used. Yeah. Check what happens. We have now about 60,000. Yeah. Now, you know, mesh density is here for controlling the global amount of mesh elements. Now, of course, the question could come up, how can I control the size of the elements near object? Can I also change it? And yes, you can do. For this, we, we hold in our wind the parameter below model, the level of detail parameter. And because this level of detail parameter is more connected to the meshing of the object, um, we placed this not below calculation settings of the Arvind. Then we placed this in the global meshing of the program of RFM. And here you have on the end a wind simulation tab where you have a lot of settings and you see in the first stage level of detail and here we can say okay level of detail should be one for example and we do the same step again so uh, open our wind and uh, of course same question now and we go to simulate generate mesh um, yes and i expect that it's running again quicker than before because we changed now the level of detail we made it more rough and let's see what happens if we take a top view and you see now oh okay um, the, the mesh is more rough near near object of course still smaller than the rest but but you have with the level of detail your your hands on the the, the uh, mesh sizes near object and this is i think really interesting because then you can uh, uh, control uh, the effects what should be calculated near these structures now of course you can imagine this is now everything what i have to know and i would say no this isn't this is now such a really easy cross section uh, it could be much more complex and imagine this is not only a massive cross-section than a thin wall cross-section so let's change this section here of this beam from a let's say simple shape to a more complex shape to an, maybe an uh, AGB 320 
and now I change something only uh, to talk about I define in wind simulation hey please make uh, optimized member topology from zero yeah why and only that you know what this parameter means I confirm it and I jump into our wind and open it no as before and see oh my god I get the same model like before is this really is it true yeah if I generate mesh maybe I don't see it um, yes um, of course but the program is running we end up in this let's say 30,000 elements as before and the question could appear is this a bug or not and I would say no it isn't you only have to know that there is a function what describes around your AG, uh, uh, AGB a cross section a rectangular to simplify this cross section because for example if you say for my wind analysis I don't want to calculate in the detail of cross section sizes and more rough around the structure then you can simplify it with this function so you can consider every member like a uh, independent from its uh, cross section shape like a rectangular cross section and for this you have a parameter in the mesh settings yeah so so let's uh, change it now back to to this mesh uh, setting for the sections here to, to say okay optimize member topology to 5 or 10 in this case it makes no difference and uh, go back to to the wind tunnel and uh, check what happens and now if you go back to the setting you see um, we get this cross section into the wind tunnel if you want but you can control it by this mesh settings it's only important that the program knows what to do what you want to consider in this let's say if you consider only the wind on such one beam it's clear that you want to do it but if you have a uh, uh, a 50 meter big structure where you say it's covered from something I don't be interested in this uh, wind analysis around shape then you can simplify it with this rectangular box and if we mesh it here we see mesh settings what we had already then you see the processes that it's fine near the object and it's going bigger to the wind tunnel sites is still active of course we have a little bit more elements uh, than before but um, you see um, our team made it happen that you see your fine near model but going bigger to the outer boundaries no? now um, you can see of course uh, this is working but we still get always this question about simplification and for this uh, we have really to take a close look what what this means we take maybe in c direction and you see now and this could happen a question why the meshing is the, is not running to the sides of this section yeah so why we have here a small gap and you can also visualize it like this so maybe uh, here isotropic you see the, the program is binding uh, a mesh around the RFM model what is a little bit bigger with some gaps and this is connected now to the simplification um, of course the simplification makes sense not always it depends but you should know where you can control it and uh, for this we do now a meshing without simplification so we say mesh setting wind simulation and we say here um, where is it the simplification we turn off this means now the program is meshing directly the exact shape what is coming from our fam um, okay we say here calculate uh, open wind and if we mesh now simulate generate mesh yes 
then the program is creating exact the mesh on the blue shape what is coming from Afem. You see, of course, we have a little bit more elements because you have to consider more boundary conditions. And now a look on the top view shows we have no gaps. Yeah, so maybe in Z direction, no gap is here. Even the mesh on the model is now really exact on this shape. This is okay, but, but allows you to consider the shapes exactly in the wind tunnel. On the other side, you have a situation not only these nice eye sections, then you, you also have here, uh, for example, um, uh, yeah, let's create something like this. So imagine you have more complex sections. For example, we change this section into a user defined section. So I open it in the editor, in our section editor. So this, uh, this function allows me to, to load this current section in uh, our section, what can modify it. So I have it here. Let's say I explode it here, explode, and now maybe inc increase the stiffness or increase the cross section generally with a stripe 10 millimeter from steel. So imagine we weld here a sheet. Yeah. And you get here such unnice corners, for example. So save and return. So now we have here this section. Okay. Okay. And now let's turn on. Um, here I would not mesh exactly this corner. And here I would say, okay, simplification is okay for me. The size of the simplification decides if we have it more rough or not. So let, let it with this simplification and calculate wind. And you see, if you change this cross section in, in RFEM via a member cross section, um, it's really easy to get this model in the wind tunnel. So this is again really mighty, no? this change. And even uh, the meshing function understands this and can work with this stuff. And to make it better, you have this simplification because you can smooth it a little bit. Yeah. So um, here only uh, check what happens. Yes, this is for me a little bit preparation for the next uh, model I want to show you. But you see, okay, here he realizes no wind can blow in, so it uh, it closes the gap and uh, a top view shows you that he make here, maybe without perspective, that he rounded a little bit that uh, uh, this corner is not meshed exactly. Now, what happens? Um, this means, okay, no wind can blow in, but imagine we not only have one 10 centimeter beam, then we have more or less a member structure. So, um, if we, um, imagine, for example, we change this beam to half a meter length. Okay. Um, we copy it, maybe here a second beam and we have something like a corner. So maybe in X 0.5 and minus 0.5. You get something like such a member corner. For us as civil engineers or mechanical engineers, it's only such a wireframe model. For the graphics, it's a really complex stuff and it's intersected to each other. I can look through, yeah. And now the question appears, what happens uh, with such a model? Um, now I only increase the wind tunnel a little bit. Uh, as I wind tunnel, okay, above zero and a half. Yeah. Um, and yeah, 
and now we can uh, mesh also this stuff so let's check what happens with the current settings where we think it's fine and um, so let's see um, simulation generate mesh um, and you see the simplification is now on it helps to to cover this really intersected geometry because this is in reality not the true but we try to make it calculatable and um, finally you see and now we have to change uh, let's say the view to the surface mesh the program is binding a simplified mesh around yeah? he will cover all this critical situation but still of course you can look through yeah? and if you want to avoid that the wind can blow in you can increase the level of detail so let's change it and say um, mesh settings level of detail is maybe here um, maybe zero and let's check it again open wind i think the mesh will be really rough because we said now the mesh near structure is bigger generate mesh so size of mesh is really small now not not for real calculation but it's only for the sense now and you see okay this mesh is more rough because we said this size is bigger but unfortunately we can still look through yeah? and and you see now only changing level of detail is not helping always to make it wind proof yeah, because also the wind can blow now of course with less elements it makes not really a sense but but the domain don't understand this so to close it um, we uh, added here a further option and this is now the last option I want to mention in this case we have also here close openings and you can say according model size or real size and say for example 0 0.1 and this, if we use this meshing here, open wind and mesh it again, generate mesh, you will see, run, yes, that the mesh will be maybe size or amount still rough and small. And now if you show surface mesh you see the program was able to close this opening so this is also a really a common uh, question and this leads me also to the next question uh, topic um, you get with this opening closing function what is available in the mesh option the option to close these small gaps in your structure in details whatever yeah but it's not here to close full structures, maybe a window completely. So it's not made for, it's more for this controlling of this slime or foil would be bind around if it should close something or not. And now I really lose a lot of words about this meshing options. I hope I could get you a feeling and a, a value how you can control this meshing and now this opening stuff leads me to a new type of model i prepared and uh, i prepared this here i open it uh, mixed model and this is let's say i would not say typical model what we receive in our support but maybe let's watch it first without results uh, in uh, in a rendered style so this is maybe steel structure i call it hall yeah uh, it's uh, not rectangular and with a banded uh, floor plan to see how powerful also this 3d calculation is that you can use also such uh, banded shapes into the uh, structural analysis of course uh, if you calculate it maybe similar like it we did it before 
you can calculate self weight you receive uh, again uh, if you get define these cross sections here it's eye sections main leaves bracings you receive here uh, deflections in the middle um, you receive uh, normal axis force you see compression on all columns you see bending moments um, you you get also for example here stresses in the middle you have this bending so you have here tension compression and finally of course uh, support forces on the bottom so typical general stuff I would say in our programs for structural analysis but now we come again same story as before for this simple beam if you want to do climatic analysis you to define the, the wind and snow loads and for wind we have also this CFD analysis and here I predefined already a similar load case maybe only wind load case one wind scheme in X direction you see wind tunnel is defined around structure here I selected also a constant wind profile over high and what is now really a, a, it could act like a black box if you do this press calculate you get finally deflections you see super uh, de deflection of the structure is going in wind direction bending moments also fine so you could use this load case for design of course of course you can do this but but you you should always know what you're doing and here um, it's really interesting to see inside the wind analysis and for this our team programmed now our options that you can visualize the wind tunnel results also in RFM so you get here wind simulation analysis you see um, now this is the wind pressure on the structure maybe let's look at first on the um, wind results around structure so we have here maybe the pressure scheme let's take a look on this view and you see okay this is the pressure around structure and what is interesting you get always a pressure peak in front of the column here you see maybe the simplified mesh but this opens for you a situation if you if you see wind speed that um, the wind that the steel structure is not covered the wind is blowing through yeah and this is also the, uh, the finally uh, what you see from these schemes um, this is not what you want to calculate generally because generally uh, you assume the, the steel structure is covered by a trapezoid sheeting insulation panel whatever but the program don't know this and if you um, see also the result only this results here you see ah uh, maybe without clipping plane yeah okay this model is here have some compressions according to the wind but but this is only the the grid of members inside the wind and so the wind can blow through without covering and maybe also a look into the wind tunnel uh, opens you that you calculate something what is generally not expected so maybe if you watch here you see the streamlines are running generally through yeah? of course they present this pressure on the structure what we just saw but but they neglect this these fields and for this we have to learn the program how to deal with these situations and therefore I, I, I use this model to explain you how to cover it and um, here please do following so um, we developed uh, for this type a really a special surface type uh, we called it load um, transfer surface and this is a surface would have no stiffness but only the job to suction or to to collect loads and to distribute it to neighbor elements and see how it's distributed in X and Y whatever is controlled in this sheet and I define it now for this type of surface so let's go here to boundary load transfer um, I define here 
um, these boundary lines yes of course you have to delete results maybe here this front surface this roof segment yes back also oops uh, load transfer here 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 yeah now we use these surfaces I select it take a rotation manipulation say okay please two times uh, I think the angle is 15 around this point here and go and now the lateral wall the same we have only one time um, 45 and go and now it's covered by a surface yeah of course looks good maybe only to show how this surface is working I use maybe here the surface load case and say imagine we have a wind load in x direction with standard size 1 uh, you see if this load is acting on this structure this means behind I can visualize it vice versa that the program is distributing the surface load around these beams no? if I say now the properties no? you see the properties is if we open properties they have the job to distribute it via stripes in x and y if i say please distribute it only in x okay and the program is distributing this load only right and left and this is more or less what i want to have yeah um where i say yes of course now let's check coordinate system x x x is everything running horizontally so we say to all surfaces surface edit into x and now we have a good feeling and if we send it into the wind tunnel so let's say um, wind tunnel open it everything works as expected and you see you should get this structure here and everything super no? you say okay now it's covered and if you mesh it like before today I press really often on this meshing command um, yeah process is starting of course it will create we have a big wind tunnel now it will create more meshes but for me it's important that you see this that you really have it in front of you what means this when you don't take care about uh, still settings are really rough so it's only made for presentations you have to calculate this type of structure with much more finer mesh you have to make a mesh convergence study that you see uh, at which mesh sites the result uh, uh, remains the same but but what is important now you see still here fine going bigger but um, if you show surface mesh you see hmm, we have here such ribs and this is really strange because my model have no ribs but or the outer hull of my model have no ribs and if you watch the model you see in detail are uh, the surfaces in the center and the uh, maybe if we have a top view in C direction of course these cross sections have an overstand and so the meshes only bind around yeah so so if you have here this uh, is this right see and now you see yeah of course this simplification is working but this is not the real structure what you want to calculate no? and therefore I recommend following we have a, a option made um, in our firm 
here in the mesh settings of winds that you can only calculate visible objects. Yeah? This means if you check here, uh, for example, please make visible all surface with the type load transfer, for example, we have only these surfaces active. And if we run now the analysis, so I do it now with this global command that you see also this two-stage analysis and we can check later the results. You see at first the program is doing the Arvin job, what maybe meshing and calculating the CFD analysis according to the calculation parameters what we defined. And then you have automatically a second calculation step. So if I click on it, it's the static analysis of the wind pressures from the wind analysis. You get also here the, the convergence diagram for, for the analysis, what is done, uh, visualized here. Uh, here I define the mesh settings so rough that I can receive results pretty quickly, but here you see how the um, residual pressure still uh, oscillating and begin really big during the different iterations and in the beginning it have a, a, a let's say a, a convergence gradient, but it's still too big. And this static analysis job is still waiting for the results what are coming from the wind analysis. Huh? So now the first calculation job, the CFD analysis uh, is ended. The loads are transferred from the outer hull to the structural elements and the program can do static analysis. Everything is fine, we get the screen back. Now the question appears what we see. At the moment nothing. Why? Because our, let's say, uh, only these transfer surfaces are active, so I break the visibility mode and now maybe make a wireframe model to see more. You see, um, we get now first few what I always do, what makes my deflection and I would say fine. Yeah? So deflection is running in wound. The next few what I do is maybe check forces. I see, okay, in the back we have tension. Oh, now also we have here tension, so it means uplifting, uplifting wind. And we get also here bending moment, we see pressure is acting. And if we check now the corresponding wind simulation, you see um, we get also wind pressures now, not only on members and on these surfaces. Um, if you check this, um, let's say pressures around, you see um, we can slice this blind. Now we have also pressure in, for, in front of this structure. Yeah. So now it seems better than the starting model. Yeah. Of course we can take a look in wind tunnel how it looks like, but for me it seems now okay we send in something what is more real, so we covered it, we have also about these ribs, let's check it. But uh, let's go to our wind. And you see, okay, now if I say um, this is simulation, show computational mesh, you see the ribs are gone, so it's more clear. So, of course, it's simplified, so the simplification effect is here, but you can control it, like I showed you. You have in front a pressure, here a suction, so 
so far clear we have this wind flow now not through the model then we have it around the model of course you can animate it it makes really impressive graphics where you can see how the flow is going around the structure and um, of course all other results maybe like pressure like pressure around uh, is similar like in in rfm huh? yeah so um, let's say you see you get um, now the pressures on this distribution surfaces and this distribution surfaces gives this pressure to the structure itself so um, let's take a look on static analysis and you see here distribution of loads what is here important you have here um, one D elements where you see okay concentrated force this is maybe in X we get uh, only this is in local X so in member longitudinal directions are almost zero um, in Y direction you see maybe the outer suction is on the beam and in wind direction you see okay how the wind is pressing against the vertical axis of the beam and these forces are coming from the distribution surface and used for the static calculation to calculate these deflections. Now um, this should show you how you can do from RFM or can use the RFM model in wind tunnel and receive back the forces. Of course the forces depends on what you send in and which calculation parameters you used. It's your game now to say I have maybe here more load cases. Yeah, imagine you have maybe CFD wind load mean, wind load gust, wind load storm, so you can define different wind schemes to apply it on the load case. Yeah, uh, yeah to apply for every wind scheme one load case and to apply it to the structure for further calculation. This is also possible. If you imagine you have now these two load cases or more, the program allows you to say, of course I want to have a combination um, surf weight with wind, if you have to consider some safety factors, maybe from standard we would have a 1.5, if you have some more safety factors for according any uncertainties from the CFD analysis, you can change this factor here and you can calculate and the program is combining surf weight with wind loads in one load case and these wind load cases could be considered. Now we have surfed plus wind plus additional safety. Um, you can consider this load case in any design to, to make a check according to Eurocode, whatever. No? So this brings me now to the end of my demo webinar and I want to sum up everything what we did today and give you outlook. Yeah. Um, so uh, I talked today a lot about discretization. So I showed you how you can move member elements um, into the wind tunnel. I showed you how you can consider surface element in the wind tunnel and corris corresponding to all these effects what I mentioned to you, you can also consider surface elements and solid elements. Further, we talked about how you can consider member wireframe models in the wind tunnel, which issues appears, and how you can, let's say, close member structure wireframe models, member grids with such load transfer surfaces to distribute loads on members. And finally, I showed you how you can combine these load cases, how you receive the loads in RFM and how you can combine it with other loads. To the outlook, of course, our team is still working hard on these programs. We are working on uh, several topics. One main topic is a result combination for wind loads. So if you imagine 
So I showed you here this distribution of loads um, where you see, okay, this is maybe the forces in uh, C. This is acting for only one load case, but if you imagine you have here maybe a wind load case in uh, in X, in Y, in uh, copy in X, Y, or maybe let's describe it with zero degree, with 90 degree, with 45 so you or maybe with strong and weak wind you can set up a list of load cases you can wish to consider and we and if you combine it later in a result combination um, maybe that you say please make me an analysis of all these load cases um, you don't receive these results here, only internal forces, support forces, but this distribution of loads is not done, so our team is just working that you get also a result combination envelope for this load distribution. Then we're working on a, let's say, wind statistics. This means uh, as mentioned, you can send in uh, weak wind, strong wind, uh, different wind schemes on your structure in different angles. And uh, you also, let's say, receive here then a set of min and max values and you can connect it with uh, uh, a factor how often they appear during time. And here we uh, just working on a integration that you get something like a statistic envelope about max and mean values from different wind actions yeah, that you can calculate from this characteristic calculation value to a design value. Later um, or a parallel be working on a um, as you see uh, what I showed you in um, where is my mouse um, with these surfaces here uh, we place the surfaces now in the center. What is, of course, one solution, but a better solution would be to make something like a hull, where, where it describes the real surface of such a model. So, um, I would say um, the surface should run around on the outer side. Um, we dis we, we're working on a new surface type where you can describe the outer hull of a building and this outer hull should directly learn to, to transfer loads to the neighbor elements. And this is, we call it internally wind surface, but this is also a topic where we're just working hard on it. And with this, I come to the end and give back. Thank you, Andreas, for this nice presentation. Some words from my side, a hint. Just book your free online appointments, you know, such as a product demonstration of RFM6, RSTAP9, RWIN2, R Section 1, or you know, to our add-ons. Just click on that link at the bottom here, or you can scan the QR code. You can download the PowerPoint slides in a PDF format from our website. In the next days, you will get an email with a link to the page with the recording, PowerPoint, and the model of today's webinar. Okay, that's also all from my side. Thank you for your attention. Thanks to Andreas Niemeyer for his presentation. I hope we meet each other in a future webinar. Thank you again. Bye-bye.